My name is Robert Griffiths, I'm the Communist Party candidate in this constituency and I'd like to join the other candidates in congratulating the Merthyr Tidville Trade Union Council for organising this debate, but I want to go a little bit further than just some fine words. Unlike most of the candidates on this platform, I can also assure the Trades Council and other trade unionists and working people here that whether elected or not on May the 7th, I will continue not only to be an active trade unionist, but one who stands for the repeal of all of Britain's anti-democratic, anti-trade union laws. I'd be very interested to hear the views of the other candidates on that particular question. We have some of the harshest anti-labour laws in Europe, and the Labour government did next to nothing about them for 13 years, and the Tories promise another dose of anti-trade union laws in the future, uh, uh, and uh, everything that UKIP, a party bankrolled by big business, has ever said indicates that they don't oppose anti-trade union laws in the slightest. I oppose them, and I'll do that whether or not I'm elected. I'll oppose them as a member of a united member of the Cardiff Trade Union Council. And by the way, strong trade unions organised in the workplace is the best way of ensuring that ruthless employers can't use super-exploited immigrant labour to undercut paying conditions. If you want an MP who stands in the tradition, does his best to stand in the tradition of Keir Hardy and S.O. Davis, the two great socialist MPs who've represented this borough, then, in my view, you should seriously consider voting communist on May the 7th. Keir Hardy, who, by the way, was an immigrant from Scotland, and S.O. Davis, who was an immigrant from Abercombe Boy. <laughs> the message they preached... The message they preached and the, and the position that has always been adopted by the communists and socialists and trade unionists who make Merthyr Tidville Trades Council one of the finest, best organised and most active trade, un trade union councils in Britain. The message they preach is unity of working people, not the division of working people along national lines or racial lines or whether they're immigrants or not. And, uh, I'm not a clairvoyant, but I think I know what S.O. Davis and Keir Hardy might have said if they were speaking here. They would have pointed out that Britain is the sixth biggest economy in the world we have the second wealthiest capitalist class in the world with more financial and economic assets around the globe than any other capitalist class except that of the United States. We are an enormously wealthy economy and country. The problem is, of course, that the vast majority of that wealth is owned and controlled by a tiny minority who stash more than half of it away in 28 British-run tax havens around the world, from the Isle of Man and Jersey to the B Bermuda and the Cayman Islands and the British Virgin Islands. I'd like to see one of the other parties have anything to say about that. I'll tell you what the Communist Party says. We should be shutting down all of the tax havens under British jurisdiction around the world. We should be taxing those phenomenal amounts of wealth. Instead, what have we had? Tax cuts for millionaires, but also tax cuts from Labour, from the Lib Dems, from the Tories, supported by UKIP, tax cuts for the profits of big business. We're now one of the lowest rates of corporation tax on big business profits anywhere in the world, lower even than the United States. That's the reality. There's no case at all for, for austerity. We don't need to be cutting welfare benefits. We don't need to be slashing and privatising public services. We, there's enough wealth in Britain, if it was properly taxed, to invest in our public services, <coughs> not have any kind of privatisation. We should be able to invest in the environment, in housing, in public transport. And never mind freezing prices on energy for six months or 12 months or whatever it is. 
Do you think the companies, do you think the big six won't find a way around that? Do, don't you think they'll be increasing the prices of your household fuel before the freeze comes in and then doubling them afterwards? Of course they will. Why not take gas, electricity and the railways back in public ownership where they can sit <laughs> after the Second World War on the basis of public ownership and economic planning.